in five, four, three. And action. You are making people want to kill me. Look, nobody wants to kill you. It's real what you're doing. Yeah, but how real does it seem? You are making me scared. It's all in your head. Are we safe? Are the doors locked? Is security on? Is everything? Don't you think you're overreacting, Slight? And I was just a wreck. I was just crying and crying. Such a drama queen. She's faking it. And the Oscar goes to acting. And that's the piece I don't think people fully understand. I think you need therapy. Whoa. Before we go on, if you enjoy the channel, please do me the favor, watch the video from beginning till end. Because the longer you watch it, the more it helps YouTube rank it and share the video with everyone. Thank you. Your support means everything. To him finally being lionized as in the prime and his prime. Fuck. went from being oh no welcome slayer nation i have some great news for you today i hope you're all doing great nope that didn't work one more you have failed me for the last time welcome slayer nation i hope you if you're tired of starting over stop Giving up. That is eating away at what you love in order for it to shine. And one man's vision is... Oh, Sometimes you don't have to make things better for them to be great again. You merely have to rule, rule. Okay. <laughs> and machines in order to toss Marvel, Ant-Man's the Wasp back. Hollywood continues to slow boil the culture and crazy. Well, right now, Spider-Man actor Andrew Garfield has stepped up and face fighting motherfucker. I can't do it. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll do it live. Fuck it. And in unbearded wars, but the prime didn't stop there. They stapled in intersectionality, individuality, but it could be me, but it could be both. Ah! Harry and Meghan torch what little was left of their relationship with the royal family. The people have spoken. They're done. They loathe Mr. and Mrs. Markle. Oh, she's an idiot. Harry and Meghan, the docuseries, is a complete disaster. And what little was left, frankly, of their own reputation. There is a mixed race member of the family. She's called Meghan Markle, but she chose not to do her job and to head off to the west coast of America and to make money. What the fuck was she thinking? I typically don't cover celebrities. I slay giants and I step on cockroaches, but when you got a fake duchess from L.A. and her mentally deficient husband crawl into bed with a street giant that impacts culture and politics well i'm gonna pull out the boot <laughs> orchestrated reality show yeah so what's the point of this series is this just another pity party are you trying to cash in before parliament next year strips you of your titles and you have nothing left to sell because there's something wrong with this woman and to exploit titles they didn't earn selling a name from a family they can't stand that they brand as racist all while talking about a truth that people need to know and spilling the beans everyone's already thrown up megan I was more of an activist. To really understand these people, you have to dig underneath their skin. They actually use photos from the Harry Potter premiere and from Katie Price going to the magistrate's court when she was going to be sentenced. They did that so they could build more drama and tell you, hey, look, our life really was in threat. We couldn't step outside without risking everything. But when someone has to use lies on top of their lies in order for you to feel empathy and compel and engage you to watch it some more. It really takes a lot to understand who they are. So you had Harry, the black sheep of a royal family, married an almost 40-something Megan. She was a divorcee who had just passed her Hollywood expiration date, so she had to hook a prince or be irrelevant forevermore. Well, everything was fine in the beginning. They had the whole fairy tale, multi-million pound wedding. The world loved them, the press idolized them, and people cheered but their true character didn't emerge till after the wedding. Oh, it's like this family is ours to exploit. It's despicable. The first three hours of this uh, Netflix series paint a very different, far uglier picture 
of this country and our royal family. I've always loved my brother. Liar, liar, your pants on fire. You know, a long time ago, I heard my grandfather advice him. When you're not the brightest bulb in the pack, don't try to cast shadows. You'll only burn yourself out. Whoa. So it begins. At my signal, unleash hell. We're back. We're back and we are live. It's so good to be here today, my friends. It is our sixth live stream. But you know what? Today isn't an ordinary show. Today we're going to do a deep dive into Harry and Megan, or as I like to call them, she who must be obeyed in her ginger handbag. And it looks like we have a full house. Look at all of you. You honor me. Thank you for showing up. I'm sure you're as excited as I am. But before we go on, I have a surprise to share with you. In 10 days from today, on Wednesday, February 21st, I'm going to be holding my very first membership live stream. So if you're not a member of Slayer Nation and George the Giant Slayer, hit the button, join, and you'll be able to join me on the panel. Ask me any questions. We'll have a chat. It'll be a good old-fashioned get-together where we have a lot of fun. Now, over the last year, a lot of people have been asking me, George, why in the world do you focus so heavily on the Megans? Like, what's the point? You cover Hollywood, pop culture, the news. And then you share your love about Tolkien's mythological masterpiece of Middle Earth. But then you take a magnifying glass to this couple. It's like, why? The answer's simple. It's because I view Megan and Harry as the prime example, number one, of not only everything that's wrong in Hollywood, but everything that is bad in society today. They are role models for the rot that is corrupting the culture. We're talking about two people playing as posers, mocking life and the royal family. Think about it. You have a couple, Walmart Wallace and her doormat, who were gifted with royal titles, one by birth, one by marriage. The very first woman to transform a prince into a frog. But did they embrace the virtues of nobility, grace, honor, heart, self-sacrifice in service to the people who gave them all these gifts? No. Instead, they embrace the vice of betrayal, attacking family, trying to transform hate into hard cash and coming out on top. And then what did they do? They tried to brand the citizens of the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth nations as bigots. I'll share another secret with you. I have a deep love for my cousins across the pond, and I'll be damned if I do not do everything to defend what I love to the last. So are you ready? Welcome, Slayer Nation. Today, we have two amazing guests for you. We have Baggage Claim and Sean Atwood, and we're going to break down the prince who gave away a promising future and his family, all for nothing but pride in the dog leash, and his wife, a D-list Hollywood wannabe, who wants to be the queen of the Hollywood hive, no matter what the cost. So our first guest is Baggage Claim. If you don't know her, this is my very first time meeting her. I was backstage with her. I'm like, I'm excited to see you. I love your videos. She brings this grace and elegance with these bite-sized facts with this well-woven tapestry of humor. She's brilliant. Let's welcome Baggage Claim. Hi. How are, you, how are you doing? Good, good. Thanks, George, so much for inviting me. I'm very happy to be here. That was a fantastic introduction to the whole video. And 
and everything you had to say, it was just absolutely beautiful. This is why we talk about the Harry and Meghan stuff. It goes far deeper than, than it might seem on the surface. It is. It does. And let's bring out Sean Atwood to talk about this. Now, Sean, if you don't know him, he's an author of 23 books. I'm a little bit jealous because I've only written two. But he shines a light on like the darkest corners of humanity, from gangsters to predators. But he also has one about life lessons. And his videos, I fast become friends with him when he interviewed me last month. They're superb. Sean Atwood. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me on. How you doing? Excellent. I had to run to the shop real quick and get colic <laughs> drops for the baby, but I'm here, I'm here now. <laughs> Everything okay? I know how that goes. Yeah, could be. it's okay. It's a whole new way of living, isn't it, when you've got a newborn? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you don't sleep. <laughs> you don't how, sleep. How old is your baby? And congratulations. Oh, thank you very much. Little Ziggy is five months old, but he's already in clothes that are over one year old. He's over 25 pounds. He's massive. Good. Hey, yeah. that's good. Yeah. <laughs> he's going to become prop- a giant slayer himself. He's going to be six and a half foot, I think. He's a proper milk monster. <laughs> we need that. We need that. We need more slayers in this world. Especially, it, it, it's funny. Um, I, I was looking, I was like thinking about what topics, like where do you start with the Megans? I like to call them the Megans. I, when I first started making the videos, I called them the Markles. But I'm like, you know, that that's actually insulting to the relatives because they, they didn't do anything wrong. So I'm like, yeah, it's the Megans. And I thought we'd kick everything off with the Vogue cover. Y'all saw what was going on with the Vogue, where her former fair weather friend, you know, Enos Innitful, the editor of Vogue, did a cover where he had the 40 most influential women. And uh, I thought it was funny because the fact that, where's Megan? She doesn't appear anywhere on there. It's like they took her and they removed her. And they're like, hey, not a problem. We don't want you anywhere on our cover but what's amazing about it is the reason why so here's the cover real quick see so it has everybody from oprah being centered Hmm. and you have like Gigi haddad and you know what's worse victoria beckham because you remember how close the megans were with the beckhams until about four months ago when all of a sudden it was like they cut it off and that was done and uh so you have all these women the most influential women and remember megan was a guest editor in 2019. Well, that is what seems to be the problem. And the article says, in one meeting, she made staff cringe by insisting, I want to break the internet, which is a phrase coined by Team Kardashian in 2014. Megan sure thought highly of herself. Speaking of attention, Mr. Schofield added, staff at British Vogue were described as silently exasperated while trying to follow Megan's direction. You know, it's kind of like one day you're the hammer, one day you're the nail. But karma comes knocking for everyone. It's just amazing. Yes. And I think that just even the breakup from Victoria Beckham, because Megan sort of forced Harry to start this this fight with uh, with David Beckham accusing the couple of selling stories about them as if as if the two of them would be interested in doing anything like that. They themselves are these massive celebrities. Why would they crave doing something as childish as that? It, it, but but it's, it's the same way. I mean, if we take it back, Sean, you and I talked about this uh, in the very first time you interviewed me. You were asking, like, what did you think about the wedding? When was the point, George, that you thought that she was unmasking herself? I said the wedding was the day. That was the day, I think, when the bubble burst. You, know, you think baggage claim, it's like you had this woman. Let's break it down. She was never an actress. She basically has a long list of cameos, a cameo marathon. I mean, it, it's what any working actor would do who never who never broke through, who hit their stride. I have friends in acting, and one of them has 52 roles. But I swear, you will if you saw them on the street, you'd be like, I've never seen you before. Because they're like reporters, police officers, you know, the coroner. Like, they get a couple of lines here, maybe two or three times in a show. But you have Megan doing the same thing, you know, a couple of roles in Fringe for two episodes. And then her cameo marathon in Suits. I think uh, I broke it down in my last video. It's like after seven seasons, 300 and something plus minutes. It's 1.27 minutes per episode when you average everything out. You have her inviting Clooney's, Oprah, Idris Elba, all these people to the wedding. It's like, She turned a networking event. There you go. She turned it into a networking event. That 
showed her character. This is supposed to be a holy ceremony for a couple in the public. And it's fascinating how she turned that around to, uh, you know, first of all, we could we could see as as just people viewing from the outside that you have not prioritized your family at all. It's all about uh, networking with people you don't know. And then um, she also uninvited people that she would from the evening event versus the date event, which is sort of very, that's a very rude thing to do to people. But then in the Netflix documentary, no, sorry, in the Oprah documentary, she made it sound like she never cared about the wedding in the first place. She never cared about uh, the significance of it or the opulence of it, that instead it was simply uh, pushed upon them that all they cared about was just the two of them, that it was uh, the archbishop and the two of them getting married. So it's interesting is that she she pushes so hard in one direction and then claims to be the polar opposite. And then we as, as viewers are, uh, it's as if we're, you know, she looks at us as if we're stupid or something, as if we can't make the connections that you obviously care. You obviously care about how um, the opulence of everything and looking a certain way. Exactly. Sean, you've covered predators in your books. What would you say are the similarities? I mean, just based on the wedding itself. And then we see the ramifications of all her actions come out with the Vogue cover that she wasn't included. So I'm fascinated by what created this character. And we've interviewed Samantha Markle on the channel. We've had Tom Jr. on regularly. We've had the dad on briefly. And the impression I'm getting from speaking to the people who know her the most, you know, from childhood, I mean, Samantha Markle has classified Megan as a malignant narcissist. So if you look at the traits, you know, they're out to maximize and extract the resources from individuals so that they can advance in life. And it seems to me that going to the royal family, it was the ultimate way to monetize her career, as Lady Colin Campbell told us. So <laughs> it's backfired, you know, in the last year or so. We've seen the public really turn against. I mean, in this country now, the headlines consistently are just absolutely slamming them. So she had a fantastic opportunity getting in with Prince Harry, and she's absolutely blown it because in the beginning, the British public were very favorable about Meghan, but her behavior since then has just shown her true colors. And Samantha said if Meghan had gone to the wedding with all of her family members, then the truth would have come out mm -hmm. to the world. So she's living an absolute charade. Wow, but do you find in your research of various predators that she shares any qualities with him. I mean, obviously she's not a gangster, or, but because when I was doing a deep dive on her, I was looking at narcissistic personality disorder. I'm not a doctor just stating that, but I was doing research on that and histrionic personality disorder. And I found that there are like when there are people who can have both histrionic personality disorder and narcissistic personality disorder. The only difference being the two is, the one with narcissistic personality disorder or NPD, they crave attention, right? But they crave it to a degree, but they only want positive attention. They want everything focused on them. Any negative attention, they lose their mind. Where the opposite is true of those with, because they the, the NPD people have this inflated uh, sense of self-worth. They're like, I'm queen of the universe for Megan. Those with histrionic personality disorder, they just want any attention. You know, they just like, I don't care, positive, negative, just give it to me. Want to be the center, the sun of everything. And I thought your insight would be uh, particularly fascinating given predators that you've studied. Indeed, George, I'd say it goes beyond histrionics and narcissism into psychopathy, no empathy. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at the way she's treated her father, I mean, when I saw him here on Pierce Morgan's show and when he opened his heart, it almost brought tears to my eyes, what he'd gone through, and you can just feel his inner pain. Mm -hmm. So to just want to social climb at the cost of your family's well-being, that's psychopathy as far as I'm concerned. I agree. Baggage claim, what do you think? I One of the reasons I became so interested in the Harry and Meghan situation was because I had the misfortune of dating a narcissistic personality disorder some years back. 
Um, I had a pattern of being attracted to narcissists and uh, I have this feel I have this thought that in life you get tossed worse and worse challenges until you learn your lesson that whatever the universe is trying to teach you it just things get worse and worse so I came across sort of people who could be called kind of narcissistic and then it was worse the next next boyfriend was worse the boyfriend after that was worse and then finally my big big lesson my um worst lesson was um at the hands of a straight up narcissistic personality disorder is my guess of it after studying it i'm not a psychologist but just looking at whatever research i have since then i would guess that he is very high on the psychopathy scale sort of similar to what you're describing george that doesn't he you know he doesn't care same as you sean that this he he basically could have thrown anyone under the bus for the sake of whatever his needs were and um was extremely manipulative in the beginning um it kind of put me on this pedestal tried to convince me it, it kind of felt like real love the early days and i know that's right. called the love bombing stage and when I got out of it, it was like waking up from a dream. And I had become very isolated. There were a lot of attempts to kind of isolate me from, from my family, from my friends. Um, it luckily didn't last very long. That I think that could have been worse damage of, that I could have kind of committed to, to people around me. And when I came out of it, and then slowly I started to try to understand what I what was happening, the more than I was looking at the Harry and Meghan situation, it was kind of giving me that that same feeling. Vibe, that same vibe. Yes. And I, I know what you mean. I think we've all had one of those relationships. I had it, um, I had it very young. And because I was kidnapped when I was seven, there were certain patterns that I missed growing up in like my emotional wiring and my evolution, which I had to learn you know, later on through more trial and error. And mm. um, Megan just reminds me of all those classic, like, well, she does the victimhood thing. You mentioned the love bombing, but she also does the triangulation very well, where it's kind of like you need a third party in order to get your partner to focus on, like, this is the bad guy. This mm. is the wedge, right? And then the blame shifting, where she will turn around and I studied it and it was fascinating how narcissists will use blame shifting in order to maintain dominance over the other partner where they're like, look, this person is to blame over here, but you didn't do anything about it. You've created the situation. So they'll love bomb them on one end and then blame shift on the other where they're constantly keeping the person kind of like on this seesaw or this tightrope back where it's like, and, and that happened to me. That happened to me very early on. And I was like, okay. And then one day I was like, what the hell am I doing? I survived a dude beating me day in and day out. And I feel like crap every day. But then I feel good. I'm like, this is nuts. And I was like, mm. yeah, you're no good. Time to go. Hasta la vista. Well but, done. But uh, no, it wasn't easy. That, that's like the summation. You know how it, there's a process to it. Because at first you're sucked in. You know, it's naturally you're like, because the person that love bombing or scenting, and there's so many aspects to it, they make you feel like there is you're the center of the universe, like yeah. there is nobody else. And that can be uh, addictive mm. to a degree. And you're like, wow, this person, you, you mistake the technique that they're using for love. But, um, and you could almost, you can almost convince yourself to do anything to get that back. Mm -hmm. And, I was prone, one of the bad habits I had is that I always sort of um, deprioritize my own needs for someone else's. So if someone was upset with me, whatever they were saying felt more important to me than however I was feeling in that situation. I was more, I was a very people pleaser oriented type person. It took a long time to kind of undo that in my mind. And so that works perfectly for narcissists. They they can kind of see you a mile away. Oh yeah. You know, they can, they can, you know, in a crowd, they're going to look at you this one. Yeah. You know what, you know what, what saved me? That's why I had a difficult time when I was first reporting on the Megans. What saved me was my family. And what I mean by that is my, the root, my foundational root. And even though you'd think it would be broken, given the fact that my dad kidnapped me and beat me on and off for you. I don't know if you knew that. I didn't and know it was your father. Yeah, it was my father. But here's the funny thing, because my mother and my grandfather and grandmother raised me and gave me such a foundation 
she tried to split me from my family with little, like little doses, little, like, did you see what they did? Did they treat you? Up? And I was like, and my instant reaction was like, yeah, that was like, stop. What are you talking about? These people unconditionally love me. Where are you going? And so she kept trying to pivot each time. And that red flag would be like, yeah, this is not working. She, I would watch her upon reflection trying to attack them like my sister because I helped raise her along with my mom. Her dad had left the picture. And so I was talking to her every day. How's school? Because she's 15 years younger than me. How's school? How's life? How's this? How's that? And she would turn around to me and uh, the narcissist, we'll call it. <laughs> she would turn around and go, why do you spend so much time talking to her? What the hell are you doing? I'm like, that's my sister. My sister is first. She's like, above me? I'm like, mm, yes. She's like, what do you mean above me? I was like, love you, love her. My mom, totally different. They're in two different ways. So every time she would try to attack that foundation, it would just, it would, there would be a backlash. You know what I'm talking about, Sean, where you have that type of personality that keeps trying to chip away. Yeah, and it look, you look at Harry's glazed eyes. He looks like a victim of a narcissist. It looks like his resources have been completely depleted and he's at his wit's ends. When you see him stepping out of vehicles, or when he's been on the substances, and that's probably is self-medicating for the situation that he's in. So I'm just curious as to whether she will fulfill what Samantha Markle predicted. She will drop Harry at some point, and she, Samantha Markle told us that she won't be satisfied until she's the billionaire president of America, or she's married a billionaire. So I'm wondering whether they are at breaking point. What, what do you think, George? You think it's sustainable? Well, I, I don't think it is sustainable, but when you're talking about the politics of the situation, I had pulled an article that I wanted to share with y'all because I found it interesting that once again, I think that has been her end game since day one. Get the billionaire, play a little in Hollywood, get into those elite circles, and use that as a launching platform for politics. She wanted to kind of follow a little bit of the Obama model, a little bit of the Clinton model, and... Uh, kind of a, the Schwarzenegger, combine them. Because you notice that every once in a while, they throw out something. Anytime in the United States, there's a Senate hearing. And I think it was this last week or a week ago, there was a Senate hearing on online um, controlling of information and how to secure it for children's safety and privacy. So what do they do? They turn around and take advantage of that situation. Luckily, no one paid attention to it, but it shows you their intent over the long term is to try to find a way into politics. So hold on, let me get this bigger for everybody so they can see. Uh, it basically says, today the U.S. Senate Judiciary Committee held a bipartisan hearing on online child safety in front of a packed room, including dozens of parents whose children have suffered or died due to online harms. The Archwell Foundation has been working with many of those families to, surprise, to provide a support network for parents dealing with grief. Now, what I get from this entire thing, online safety equals censorship. I mean, the first act that he did when he came here was attack the Constitution and the First Amendment. He's like, free speech? That's a little crazy. Yep. I think they they have painted themselves as the poster child's children of bullying. And both of them have sort of this very infantile look projection of themselves. Harry seems to be stuck in that mode of, you know, being a 14 year old when his mother passed and being at, at the whims of then the, the media ever since. And same with Megan. She likes to kind of present herself as if she's this naive woman who went into this royal family, knowing nothing, not even knowing anything about Prince Harry, never having Googled him, nothing. And um, and then being at, at the whims of the royal family and being bullied then by the, the British press. And what both of you pointed out earlier was that they were, she was actually really well received in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And I think that threw a kink in her plan. I think what she would have preferred was that she was highly criticized because what I noticed going back to those early days is that she was doing a lot of things that were incorrect. Mm -hmm. She was not following protocol. She was not, let's say like the tiny things of not wearing tights or hat and these things. Sound, 
yeah, these things sound silly to other people. Why does it matter? But if you're going into a family, marrying into family, isn't it important to learn the customs of that family and of that culture and respect that? And she broke those little things, hoping that she would be criticized because then she could turn around later and, and point to that and say she was bullied. Unfortunately, that didn't really happen. There were two or three instances of really of people criticizing her, but the meat of the criticism didn't really start until they left the royal family, really. I, I don't know if, if you guys disagree with me on that, but that's kind of what it seemed like no. to me. Actually, you, you opened some great insight. I just want to tell everybody, please bear with me. I got a new camera, and it's like freaking flicking in and out, but I'll keep going. No, I think you hit on something that I never thought of before. Never. I, see, that's the kind of insight I love <laughs> about your videos. What, what you just showed was is that she was manipulating and creating almost these straw man arguments like, no, I'm not going to put on, not going to wear X, Y, and Z. I'm not going to perform X duties. I'm not going to do ABC. And we would see that, but I never thought of it as, I thought of that as more of her arrogance. Like, I'm not going to break the rules, but looking at it from your perspective, I'm like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. That is a strategy right there. That is one in which she's like, I'm going to set people up so they keep falling into these traps. Because everyone embraced her in the UK. I remember, I remember my family was telling me, doing, do you see Megan and Harry? Look, I'm like, there's something about her that bothered me. I think because of my experiences, I didn't know what it was. It's just something about it. It's like, I, you know what it's like. You, once you've dated or lived with or married or been with a certain group of people, you get it's like the hairs on the back of your head stand up. You're like, yeah, yeah. So I don't know what it is, but that that's that, that, nope, no good. And uh, yes, that's that's amazing. She did set a lot of traps. And what I love about it is that we're now learning more and more from authors that have gotten knowledge from the courtiers, like Prince Philip. I always call her Walmart Wallace and her doormat. Right? I love that. I love but so much. We found out just recently that that actually Prince Philip thought the same way. He would call her. Um, he would call her the Duchess, I believe, of Windsor. It was oh, that, yeah. what a what a yeah. That's quite the insult. And sorry, yeah. just to bring it back to what you were you were saying earlier that I think using she wanted this fodder of of bullying instances to then turn around and use it against the people and the press so that then she could leave because that was the plan from the beginning as as I know both of you have mentioned in the past that you agree with as well that the plan was always to leave it was always to go back and take Harry with him and go back to California everything else was sort of a ruse and a stop in the middle and then she could use that to catapult her into political campaigns and say, I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor of bullying and, and press censorship is a ne necessity. I don't know if she thought all of that through necessarily, but I think she that has been the big thing that she has stood up on is this claim that she is this great victim of intense bullying at the hands of a free press, which is her greatest, uh, which is her greatest enemy. It is, but I think that that's one of the difficult aspects. Wouldn't you agree, Sean? They they try to both Megan and Harry in their own ways try to present themselves as victim, but as victors. That it, it clashes. It's like here the press beats us up, but here we're victim. It's like what what's going on? They had a game plan, and they had a hell of a successful trajectory in the beginning, and then, like Baggage says, the universe conspired against them. And it became a stress test. And when you put a stress test on people like that, they show their true colors. Mm -hmm. So how do you measure ego? Is it measured by how much money you've got? Is it measured by how successful you are in Hollywood? Is it measured by titles? When you enter the world of the royal family, money, power, it's meaningless. It's all titles. And to marry Harry, who's the fourth, fifth in line to the throne, that, that's pretty damn high. So she really had it going on with her game plan. But once she started to get rejected, it's, it's just become a complete meltdown. And they've been exposed for the frauds that they are because they'd be paid millions to do a podcast that you can't even get off your ass to do. <laughs> be fed the biggest celebrities in the world to sit down for a couple of hours and interview. And these guys are so incompetent, they can't even get it together. And they, they get called grifters. 
I mean, their true colors have been completely exposed and they must be in absolute battle stations mode right now with their PR experts scratching their heads, wondering they can how on earth can we get back to where we were several years ago? But they can't. You, you just nailed it. What do you do when, when you have executives at one of the biggest companies in, in, in entertainment, Spotify, call you great? They called them out. We've called them out on many times in our each in our own ways. But when you have that happen, it's like that, that that's with you. That's like that scarlet letter A has been branded into them. And then what but they don't learn. I think that's one of the things that mystifies me about them. They repeat the same pattern over and over and over. King Charles gets diagnosed with cancer. I wish cancer on no one. Friend and no one. But I wish him well. Send my prayers that he gets better. But I'm like, the media was six years too late to this. I'm like, the, the royal family has had a tumor on their behind that's been five foot six, 120 pounds with dark hair and dark eyes for the last six years. But all of a sudden, Harry flies there like a teenager on a reality show. It's like, let me go there. Cool. Okay, I got that part. I was like, oh, okay, a son going there. I get that. I'm Greek. I said this the other day when you and I were talking. I, I was like, I, I would drop everything. I wouldn't care if I was angry, not angry. I go there. What do you need? I'm here to support you. What can I do? You want me to shut up and be quiet? I'm going to help set up a support system. I am going to get you through this because I love you. Put the past in the past. We can deal with it later. He flies from L.A., Montecito. He flies from Montecito, goes to London, stays. Now the reports originally said 45 minutes. Now they're saying 12 to 30 minutes. He's invited to stay at Clarence's house with the family. Instead, he stays at a London hotel. The king books it for Sandringham. And Harry, within 48 hours, is back on a flight. Now, a friend of mine, we were talking last night, and said, what, what would you do? I said, I would sit my ass there. I wouldn't care. I'd cancel everything. They're like, but your dad's the king, and he's got to go do his stuff. He wants to go away for a while. I don't care. I'd be like, you want, can I go with you? Do you want me to go with you? No. You want He's like, go back home. I'm staying here. When you're back, I will be here. I am a rock. Plymouth Rock. I'm not moving. The cliffs of Dover, I'm here for you. My family is fine and healthy, and that's it. But he left. And for what? To give an NFL award. I'm like, I, I, I wonder, does he look in the mirror and go, hey, Ginger, what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> I, I mean, does he go like, I left my dad who's got cancer so I can give an award that my wife's agency, the most powerful in the world, can't get me a job, can't get her a job, but we can hand out an award to an NFL player who's sitting there going, oh, the prince is here. The media called it shock. I was like, yeah. He's like, what the hell is he doing here? Who's this guy who has no skills? And it's Crazy. It just shows how dysfunctional the family is. I mean, what kind of family would not unify, even if there were feuds among them, for the best health of a parent who's been diagnosed with cancer? Neuroscience has shown the brain has an internal pharmacy. And if you're getting boosted, you're releasing the good stuff. If you're stressed out over your son's bickering, you're releasing the cortisol, you're releasing the bad stuff, which can reduce your lifespan. So, kids, come on. You need to unify. You don't want the old man to die. Get together, put these beasts behind you, and do the right bloody thing. Don't expose yourself as the materialistic phony that you are that would just jet back after meeting your dad for a couple of minutes to get on with your agenda, which is quite cancelable. There are more important things in life than bloody awards and making money. Yeah, you're right. He has a master to answer to. She clicks her her fingers and he's at attention and back, you know, handing out these awards, attending these various things. Like that aviation award where it was such a disgrace that first of all, someone would even think to hand him that um, award. But then on top of it, he's so ungracious as to insult John Travolta and, and claim that his John Travolta is, you know, dining on on the eternal story of dancing with Diana, and and I, I do think 
I think moments like this are very enlightening about the characters behind these two personas that they truly are very selfish, very um, ungracious people that, you know, a cancer diagnosis in the family is such a big deal. And yet, like you said, why wouldn't you drop everything and come and, and just support and, and George, like you're saying, just stay here. Just I'm here. Whatever you need, I am here. Um, instead, he shows up. I think it was entirely a PR stunt so that he wouldn't look worse for attending right. that NFL event right after. And there's a difference that you know how is how is Prince um, Prince William stepping up? Prince William is stepping up by taking over more roles, more duties, and is gracious enough to thank the support that the people have shown his father in the speech that he g gave a few days ago when he had to attend an event. And he thanked everybody. And he it was so it was so sweet because you could tell it was it was really heartening his spirit. And Prince Harry makes not even a reference to his father. Nothing. His you, father's health. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but you, you said it right there. N not a word. Not a, not a public, not not something. Uh, my dad, even at NFL, you know, I I flew here, my mind something to signal to signify to tell the public I love my dad, and now the thing is, is the media that in the U.S. media at least has been covering them for a long time, but a lot of that is breaking. I mean, you have one here from the Mercury News, where you hit the nail on the head. Uh, baggage claim it goes the PR theory gained traction according to the Daily Mail. After Harry turned up at the NFL Honors Thursday night, he donned a dapper black suit, cracked jokes about America stealing rugby, blah, 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 from the English before presenting the service-oriented word to Pittsburgh Steelers Lime. And then it goes on. Harry's appearance at the NFL shows that he was on an extremely tight schedule all week. Extremely tight schedule. So even if he wanted to, he couldn't have spent time with his father in any case, even if the king had asked him. That right there to me says it all. No love, no concern, no caring, no kindness. It's me, me, me. That's why I think they're look at me leeches. Two hungry ego alerts who are like, this world is ours. But I, I waffle back and forth. I, well, before I go on to that, I, it's, I want to ponder that for a second. Hey, they have a schedule. They had announced it. Before we knew about the NFL award, they were they told us that they were going to have the to be in Canada next week to start the whole pomp and parade about Invictus coming in the year, the Winter Games. Okay. So you had that plan for the 14th to the 16th. Father gets diagnosed with cancer, shows up there, but he has the NFL award to go to. Then he has supposedly the Super Bowl. Reports are mixed where they're going to be there today. Some say they weren't invited. Some say that the chairman of the NFL invited them. Some say that they've turned it down uh, because they didn't have a spot in the halftime show. We'll see what happens if they end up there or not. But the words, tight schedule, dad diagnosis, strip away the monarchy, dad, cancer, tight schedule. I can't accept those phrases together for me. I'm like, there's no schedule. Dad diagnosis, cancer, that's it. That's very odd. It, uh, it's, uh, I used to say, I don't understand. And I realized a long time ago that I was misusing the word. I'm like, I don't accept. Mm. <laughs> it's like, I understand it. I don't accept it. In the similar vein, when I realized when I was trying to understand narcissists and some of them are very, very adept at cold reading and, and perceiving exactly what someone is thinking and feeling and my assumption, my worldview was that if you have the ability to actually feel what other people are feeling and gauge it, that there's no way that then you could also be cruel to them. Right, of course. And that didn't make sense to me, that people were capable of doing that. That, that was something I had to kind of break up that idea and, and re, re, rebuild it up in my mind. But... That is the, the cruelty that both Harry and Meghan have committed against their families is insurmountable. And you add a, a cancer diagnosis to that. And it's and again, I think we are we're seeing their image completely falling apart because everything they've tried to present themselves as as these deeply humane people, um, every turn of the road gets proven otherwise. And 
whatever the PR attempts are, the, the reality is it will always out. The truth will always out. And because we can feel it, it's that gut instinct that we can feel. And there will always be an army of people that support them. And I think it's because they want to live exactly like they do, as just as selfishly and self-centeredly as go. they do. That's why they will always defend that them because they represent the life that they want to live consequence free. Uh, but the rest of us can tell, I mean, even the, the issue with the African parks, oh. uh, yeah, the, uh, the nonprofit that mm. was, I, I mean, that's terrible news to come out and there's nothing, there's, there's no action from Harry, Prince Harry, aside from just saying, well, I knew this from the beginning and I called it out and no, you know, I, I've been trying to fix this forever, but that's it. That's it. Just a little statement from your PR team. Nothing beyond that. No action beyond that. That that's you, you, you said it, the, you summed it up very well. The co people want to, the ones who support them want to live consequence. Sweet. That's why I view them. I try to convince those who love pop culture, you need to pay attention to them. They are representing the tip of, well, they want to be seen as the tip of the spear, but they want to get there. But they are exactly what's wrong with Hollywood. When people wonder why are, where's this woke mind virus coming from? Why do we have movies and television shows that are direct, that are lecture halls trying to program us kind of like with this yeah. updated uh, system? Megan and Harry are exactly that. Uh, Bag baggage claim. Can I ask, do you think that cruelty to family has transferred from Megan to Harry, or do you think that was inherent in Harry? I think, I don't think it was inherent in Harry. I think it's, I think a narcissist can start to reprogram how you view your past. And that initially, while you might be taking in this philosophy of saying bad things happen to everybody, that's part of life. You could take it that way. And I think that's a very healthy way to look at life in general. And perhaps that's how he viewed things, uh, only to then have her enter the scene, loft him up to this this big headed status where she just really put him on this big pedestal, convinced him that he's so special, but at the same time, so put upon and that this loving relationship he has with his father, with his brother, with his sister-in-law is because he's been brainwashed into accepting mistreatment at their hands. So I think she played into every sort of, sort of every instinct that I, I feel that this is a universal instinct that a lot of people have is this desire to be pandered to and told that we're, Un unbearably special and I think she really played into that and convinced him that he needs to re reprogram himself and look at the reality according to Megan that your friends your brother your family everybody is out to get you they're jealous they want to see you down they want to hold you back so any loving action from them is actually full of vindictive desire to hold you back. And I'm the only one you can trust. I, as in Megan, I'm the only one who can, who you can really trust, who truly loves you. I'm the only one who's telling you the truth. And I think that that's how she sort of put him into these blinders. Do you think do that you, condition is curable for Harry? Or do you think he's, he's going to have to be deprogrammed at some point? I think he'll, I think he does. Ha he is suffering from that sunk cost fallacy. Oh, where he yeah. has, he has suffered. He has given up every single friendship, every single relationship, his country of birth, and his entire reputation for her. Her, and I think it's impossible for him to say that he was wrong at this time. Perhaps he might get to such a deep level of of misery where he might wake up or she abandons him. And at which point I feel like he'll, it'll be like him waking up from a dream and he'll quietly with his tail between his legs, return to the family. And I think just try to disappear into the background. I, I, I do think it's, he can recover. What do you so think? Hope for Harry. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think, I don't think the people will ever really forgive him. I think from that perspective, maybe maybe two years ago he could have recovered, but how he treated Prince Philip on his deathbed, 
the queen on her deathbed. I think those are things that will never be forgiven. And now he's racking up even more guilt with how he's treating his father amid uh, a, 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 a cancer diagnosis. His sister in law is sister in law is in the hospital. There's just there still continue to be so unfeeling. And I think that claim that he made that some people did not marry for love, that they married sort of a Stepford wife per, you know, person instead. I think that was probably one of the most egregious things he's done to his family, to his brother, to make a claim like that about his selection in a wife who has been such a boon to the people of the United Kingdom as well as to the royal family. I think now we are beyond him being forgiven. People might accept him back into the fold but they'll never forgive him good word so, except if king charles's health takes a drastic turn for the worse and pray god it doesn't hmm. and harry did come back to england and was spending quality time with his father do you think that megan would support that or she would try and put a wedge in between them to maintain her dominance that's a tricky one I, I, I think she, that would be a tricky one to navigate. I think it would be a combination of support. Uh, I think there'd be a combination of support and, uh, sorry, I had a problem here. There'd be a combination of support while trying to subtly uh, keep the wedge going because you notice that every time he shows up, that it's only very brief. It's like whiplash tours, coronation, show up, leave. Cancer diagnosis, show up, leave. Even in the coronation, it had been reported that uh, the family had a lunch where they were waiting for him to come. And he's like, nope, adios, I'm out of here. Everything that happens, it's in and out. And I think that is in due to Megan. Originally, I saw it as they need to keep going to the UK to be seen with the royal family, for instance, to recharge the royal credit cards, to remind people, hey, you know, our brand, we're royalty, got titles, titles will travel. And then I also think Megan had that boomerang, kind of like the leash, Get back here because remember, when you have someone in a relationship like that, every minute they're away, even if the other people aren't saying anything, because I don't think his family trusts him at all. It's been proven too many times that he's going to release stuff in the press. It's going to get leaked. It's going to be in a book. But the paranoia level of Megan, think about it. Every minute he's away, does he reveal something? Do they get closer to them? Do they chip away? I mean, that's a weakness. Out of her sight, out of control, that's a danger. Uh, I only think that I would partially, well, it's not a disagree. I respectfully disagree with a, a baggage claim on one area because I used to think that way, and maybe I'm wrong, is I used to think he was a good guy who got played. Then I started thinking he's a good guy who got played who had some grievances, and there's certain things, and maybe because it's from my own perspective and I'm, I'm, and I'm a little bit biased in that way, I always thought that I've seen narcissists, whether men or women, be able to play someone against uh, their friends and family, but never to a destructive level, like get you to not talk to them, but to outright want to hurt them publicly. So I, so I started to wonder, is that, did she tap into his hatred? Like, are they partners in crime and soulmates who have this outward hatred, inner envy towards everything that came together? Yeah, I think that's a fair challenge because I I could be convinced either way, to be yeah. honest. And I've, you know, grown up feeling, I, I'm a second child, so I have, I've always had this chip on my shoulder and, and, sort of every time I growing up, if my brother has doubted me in any way, I've been very quick to have my hackles out and, and be angry with him. And I could see where where the narcissist was trying to kind of tear me apart and so distrust in every single one of my relationships. I could see it happening before me. And it was kind of my experience of it was similar to you, George, where I could not believe the things that the narcissist was trying to convince me of because I love my 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 friends mm. and my family so much. I said, they're not capable of doing those things. And yet a lot of the insecure sides of me wanted to believe that. So it was sort of this crossroads mm. where I could see myself going down a darker road if I wanted to. And so at the end of the day, I still think that this has been a choice. I don't think okay. he's a, 
He's a creator. Bamboozled. Like he's bam. He's not bamboozled. He's chosen. See, he's chosen. So it can be both. I think both are true. He could have been a, a good guy who had certain issues like we all do. And he, he reached out to somebody who had a, a soulful attachment, we'll call it, to his issues or someone who played them. And the hate festered. The good was buried. Uh, and to answer uh, Sean's question about uh, would Megan allow him to mm. go and be there for his father. I liked how you put it, George, that to recharge that royal credit card. I love that. I'm going to steal that. I hope <laughs> no, that go ahead. That's go amazing. ahead. And I think, uh, I think if Harry is there and playing the role of a good son, it's only because it's in some benefit to Megan. Um, and because their brand is in, in t absolute, in absolutely in tatters, even yep. the attempts at that narcissistic game that, um, she's playing where their Netflix contract is in jeopardy. So she's going and cozying up with the Paramount executives, but the Paramount executive and his wife were sort of just standing there and then were quick to ignore them at the, at the premiere for the, the movie, the one love movie in Jamaica. Oh, yeah. And they were seated so far behind <laughs> <laughs> Megan's look of, wow, here I'm sitting here in this massive ball gown that doesn't really suit the event in any way. I think um, all these little attempts that she's making, because I'm sure these things have worked for her in the past. She has used these with lovers and boyfriends and with Prince Harry, but you know, girls in the, in the real world, she's not dealing with amateurs. No, she has to, uh, but, she has to she she can't believe that she's not the smartest person in the room and of course you know her worldview wouldn't allow her to do that right. so she has to they have to cozy up to the royal family if they're going to maintain any of their brand but but think about that what you you just said again uh, it, she shows up I, it, that's why i look at every little action shows up to a bob marley movie premiere in kingstown right? hot everybody's going to be casual <laughs> But in a ball gown to be center of attention. We're going back to that HPD, the histrionic personality disorder. It's like, look, I'm the queen of the ball. Bow down before me. But, uh, and then Harry, and then they're sitting with, a, standing with a prime minister who despises the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth nations. You want to break away. Cool. But you notice there, if you pay attention, not pay attention, but when you zoom in to the body language, that uh, Paramount CEO with uh, Robbins and his wife, Trisha James, you notice that her hand the entire time was like, kept doing this. It's like Megan reached out and the woman's like, get that claw away from me. It's like, whoa, it's like smiling. I'm looking over here. I don't know who she is. I'm looking over here. Uh, but it's like looking at her husband, who in the world did you bring on this? But uh, it's, it's, see, that's what I'm saying. It's, I also feel he doesn't have neither of them have true friends around a true mate a real best friend would be like wake up what are you doing keep digging a hole you may want to do this you may believe this but this is your thousand and one comeback you got how lonely how lonely must that be george you see all your friends and associates yeah. melt away and how desperate must that make one and you touched you both touched on something very important earlier you said that there's definitely something that Meghan can leverage over Harry in terms of his relationship with his dad. If you go back many years, and if you look at how insanely popular Princess Diana was in this country, and then her premature death hit, and the conspiracies that came about, what Dodie's dad said, you know, the role of the royal family in that, what Princess Diana wrote in her own words about being worried about dying in a car crash, and Charles having a role in that. What kind of effect would that have on Harry's young mind? Because he couldn't insulate himself <clears throat> from all of those news headlines. So, you know, as he developed into a man, you're wondering how that accrued over time in his head. And has Megan come along and perhaps exacerbated that and uses that to leverage him against his father? Yes. And what do you think, Sean, in sort of his culpability on all, all this? Do you think he can recover from this? Do you think he's there's a there's a path back for him? I think, you know, we've all been in relationships with various people, um, some of them narcissists. And, um, 
It is like a drug. That person comes into your life. They love bomb you. And oh, yeah. slowly, they change your worldview so that you think you're behaving in a normal way, the way you were behaving before the relationship. But you're not. You've gone so far adrift and you can't see it. And until that bubble is punctured, and then you have to go through some kind of, it's like a diver coming up with the bends. You got yeah. you got to recalibrate yourself, and that could take weeks. It could take months. It could take years. I mean, we interviewed Richard Grennan, who's an interview uh, expert on narcissism, and he was talking about the dynamic between Meghan and Harry. And he himself said he was in a relationship with a narcissist. I think the relationship he said was three years, and it took him three years to get over it. So, I mean, the hope is with king charles blood is thicker than water and as horrible as, as it sounds for you know if, if the cancer does get really bad and harry does come home and reconcile that could be the thing that you know breaks this relationship apart if megan tries to prevent him from supporting his dad at that crucial time so that is one possibility we are yet to see play out we well, all hold on a second. I'm going to bring my producer in Mexican Iron Man. I'm trying to see if I can correct this. I'm going to be back in one minute. He's going to talk for a second about the memberships and because the camera's driving me crazy. I hope it's not bothering y'all, but I just want to fix this. Yeah, George. Uh, well, do I let everybody know that we're going to have a membership stream coming up? Uh, and I want to also recognize some of the new members, uh, which include people like Elizabeth Gallagher, who became a member at the Rebel level. Level. Uh, we've also got. Uh, uh, I believe it's Therese Hope, who's also become a member. Here, let me change this around. Here, let me move George off to the side so I can reset his microphone. Uh, let's see. We've got uh, a gifted membership from Joe X, who gifted a membership. Thank you very much. Oh, look at that. Some guy named Mexican Iron Man gifted 10 George the Giant Slayer memberships. Don't know who that guy is. Oh, wait. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. In fact, uh, Joe X also became a new member. I want to give a huge shout out to uh, Tender Warrior 68 who gifted 10 George the Giant Slayer uh, members. Uh, I also want to thank uh, Jim Alaska who gifted 10 George the Giant Slayer memberships. I want to welcome and thank uh, Mr. Buckcrack Media who became a YouTube uh, member. And oh my goodness, we have a little cutie pie. <laughs> I'm going to speak to the Mr. Little, little Cutie Pie here in one second here. So that's Mr. Buckcrack Media, who also uh, gifted 10 George the Giant Slayer memberships. Uh, we've also got some, oh my God. Okay, you know what? We got to take a break right now and show this. Look at this. Look at this. Baby Ziggy's, this. Baby Ziggy's here to say hello to everybody. I was a little hello, bit late. sweetie. He's, 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 he's been a colicky boy the last couple of nights. And, um, he looks just like you. He's he's five months old. He's in one year, you know, one year old clothes already. He was born ten pounds, and my partner Jen was in labour for two days and in hospital for two weeks. But he's a miracle. He's an absolute bundle of love, and he's yeah. And there's lots more videos of him on the Atwood Family Channel. So I'm going to take him back to his mum. Speaking of channels, our mods have uh, dropped the links to uh, both uh, Baggage Claim and Sean Atwood's uh, channel. So please subscribe. George, I'm going to turn things back over to you. It looks like your uh, video feed is working again. Let's hope it stays that way. If not, please bear with me. But we're having a great conversation. We're having a lot of fun. Man of War 665, Neighbor of the Beast, member for a month. I can't even believe that. I waited the live stream two years, and now it's already been a month. Like, where's see, camera's not working, but I'll keep uh -oh. talking. <laughs> it's all right. We'll keep going. Oh, wait. Go back to Man of, Man of War real quick. Man of War. Man of War. Emma Peel, 999. For a super sticker, thank you, Emma. Really appreciate your support. Look, every time you send a every time you buy a membership or you 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 send a super chat, that's you know you want to share a, a comment or ask a question that supports the channel, and I really appreciate you. Next, hello, fantastic, Mister Knox for Australian two dollars. The only thing Megan cared for is her own vanity. You nailed it. See, that's the thing about narcissists and those with the personality disorder and ones who have histrionic personality disorder. It's called a comorbidity, comorbidity disorder is the fact that the whole world has got to be about them. They suck the oxygen out of everyone and they don't care what the cost is to anyone else. Thank you. Fantastic. Mr. Knox. Fing book for $3. Maybe Harry feels old after losing mom, Diana. You know, that's a point. I, I could understand that, but I think 
baggage claim, and Sean would agree, millions of people every year lose moms. Like in Greece, we say if you lose a dad, it's a tragedy. You lose a mom, you're an orphan. That's like an old Greek because the pivotal role a mother plays. Both parents are, are necessary. But people lose every day. Today, someone lost their mom. Not one, thousands. That trauma and pain stays with you, but they go on. They don't use it, if anything, as an excuse for their entire life. And then try to monetize it. In his book, I was counting the other day, Spare, how many times he used his mom. Not in a way to emotionally connect, say, this is how I feel, but in order to play victim and attack the press or attack his haters. So, yeah, I don't think so. I think if Princess Diana were here, because Sean asked me that the other day, and I and I thought about it for the last 48 hours. If Princess Diana were here, I do not think she would have. I said she might have allowed the relationship to go forward before putting her foot down, only not to push him closer to her. But I don't think she would have. When I thought about it, I'm like, she would have seen Megan for what she was and was like, you know way you're getting your claws into my son. Mm -mm. I agree. Yo, oh, thank you. Fing book for $3. In my opinion, it's a very mind spread mind spring or est behavior i agree thank you fing book max relax for 10 euros george thank you max we're moving forward always forward scpoa for one pound thank you that means a lot everybody who sends in a super chat or becomes a member you understand that's inspiring to me it's like i wouldn't imagine this but this is our home it's not my home thank you George, what? Oh, man of war, neighbor of the beast, uh, said, look, a freebie. What I know of this subject can fit on the head of a pin. But give him hell, brother. Thank you, man of war. I really appreciate you, brother. I'm going to call you later. <laughs> I am Cordelia for $5. If William becomes king, Harry and Meghan will not be allowed in any role as a working royal, which I think would be great. I believe he'll do what his father was reluctant to do. You know, there was a time, and I'm still not going to fully talk about it till the king recovers, because I, I think it is rude to talk about someone's decisions that they made that you might disagree with, that you might have a negative point of view during the time of a health crisis. I, I just think those are cheap shots. But what I will say is, is very few can expect a, a father to take drastic decisions of that manner. The king is separate. I get it. I think William, Prince William, is has a point of view uh, and is made of something, a, not a certain metal. He has a certain character that he would go, okay, here's the brother, here's the king. The king is going to act always above the brother. And I think he would say, Harry is bad for the monarchy and for the United Kingdom. And I think he would put uh, both his feet in the shoe. I am Cord uh, Christy became a YouTube member. Thank you, Christy. That's awesome. We're going to hope you'll be at the membership live stream. AMRC for $10. Really appreciate it. I guess that must be a super sticker. Appreciate that, AMRC. Jackie Gould for two pounds. Thank you very much. I really appreciate all the support. Again, it's inspiring and heartwarming. Radioactive gifted 10 George the Giant Slayer memberships. Go grab them up. If you haven't, grab your membership so you can join me on the membership live stream. Thank you, Radioactive. And I guess that's it. We made it through all of the Super Chats and membership. That's awesome. Now, Baggage Claim brought up something that I have been kind of uh, really wanting to talk about for a while. And I've only noticed that three or four newspapers have been really covering it. That is what's been going on. What the heck is this? Yeah, way to ruin my transition and add the Africa, the Africa Park scandal. You know, it, this should have been in the media. Right here, if you don't know about the Africa Park scandal, Harry was made a board of director of Africa Parks Network South Africa. Now, what this organization foundation does is they manage 22 parks in 12 African countries. It's about almost 49 and a half million acres or 20 million hectares. Their whole goal, and this is where it gets interesting. This is where I believe the green tyranny comes into play. They're about conservation. Conservation above all. The ecology over the people. So he's been a board member. Several years ago, he was sent a letter by a woman 
and then by a man, and it went on and on more and more, basically stating how the park rangers working for Africa Parks have been terrorizing the people, especially those, the Baka people who live in the Congo Basin. The rainforest was where they used to live. Africa Park shows up, and what does it do? It says, you know what? We're going to criminalize your lifestyle. You want medicinals from the rainforest? Not allowed. You want to go hunting in the rainforest? Not allowed. You want to live there? Not allowed. So people didn't listen. All of a sudden, they started to become sexually abused, beaten, tortured. Some reports of even death. Harry, the moment this broke out, he should have come out instantly, grabbed every single camera of every reporter, every newsman said, you know what? I am on this board. My name, my family's name that I carry with me, I have failed. Follow me. We're going to Africa. I'm going to solve this. I'm going to pay for the investigators, whatever it takes. What do you think? Don't you think that showed another bit of his character or lack of? George, these elites, these royals, I mean, you're bringing me into my area of what I've researched now for many years. I've written books about Epstein, Prince Andrew, Jimmy Savile, all that kind of stuff. It's all about let's just maximize our publicity by pretending to be to do some humanitarian project or to have some kind of charity like the Clinton Foundation. Um, meanwhile, behind closed doors, these people are, are involved in all kinds of insidious, diabolical, harrowing, and sexually exploitive activities that they keep to themselves. It's, it's called elite deviance, whereby you've got so much money, you've got so much power. How can you get your rocks off now? It's by doing these terrible things that I'm pretty much banned from talking about on YouTube, and I don't want to get your channel in any trouble. No, I know what I'll, you mean. I'll, I'll probably just leave it at that for now. But it bothers me. It, it bothers me because... People keep trying to tell me you're being too hard on Harry. You're being too hard on Megan. I'm like, okay, how? You literally had a Baka woman. Uh, I also found out in, in um, Congo, it's Bakaya. I don't know how to properly pronounce it. So I'll stick to Baka. You had a Baka woman with a four-week-old baby in her arms. Four-week-old. Sexually assaulted. For what? This tribe of people lived a self-sustaining lifestyle with the forest, with the ecology. I mean, exactly what the greenies in one way, another way to say it, like say, you know, live with the environment, live with your ecosystem, except they put grass over a bowl of rice. They put a tree over a human being, so they get punished. But, uh, and I did a little bit more research and when you boil it all down, this is what you discover. You find out that, uh, hold on, you have African parks. When you go right into their organization, what do they focus on? African parks utilizes a clear business approach to conserving Africa's wildlife and remaining wild areas, securing vast landscapes and carrying out the necessary activities needed to protect the parks and their wildlife. African Parks maintains a strong focus on economic development and poverty alleviation. How? Yeah, you get rid of the people in the forest that you protect, and therefore the poverty is gone. So that's green tyranny to me. Nothing more. People are suffering because you have people who say we want to save the climate, take private jets to Japan for, you know, a new juicy, or go to Brazil for some biodegradable pair of boots, Again, on private jets and try to protect rainforests and parks all at the expense of people. Baggage claim. Yes. And, it, you know, this that story is just so despicable that someone could even do that to a woman, let alone with her holding her baby. And um, I appreciate in these situations, I appreciate that a person like Elon Musk is willing to stand up and, and talk about that and what he had sent two months ago that he, he hates that there are so many people who say that they're so virtuous and while doing evil things. Yeah. And of course, at that time, he was talking about Disney. But this is true for a lot of these elite uh, companies and elite 
brands and in you know informed in these individuals and i think what happens to people when they become powerful when they accrue a lot of influence accrue a lot of money is that they become so attached to how people view them that they're willing to do anything to preserve that versus actually doing what's right and prince harry he pretends he gallivants about as if he's this extremely virtuous person and he berates the rest of us for our carbon footprint while doing doing nothing to change his lifestyle to to help the environment he flies around on as many private jets as possible and yet criticizes us and then you have a s- specific situation where at least with, when it comes to usage of a private jet you could make a gray moral argument in favor or against but in this case this is just categorically wrong and yet he has no he has no gumption to come out and and take any responsibility or make any steps to actually move the needle because he he doesn't care at the end of the day all he cares about is his wealth his family his wife how he's viewed how what people are saying did did some did some press say something negative about him once in 2008 you know those are all the things he cares about he doesn't actually care about the world he just is using that as a way to increase his own influence and wealth but does he not see does he not see the fact that everything he gets a backlash from everything. It's like whether you want to call it karma or the facts of reality, because I believe in karma. It's like every lie has an expiration date. At some point, karma's coming knocking. People are going to discover it. That's still, that area, I will admit, I'm a little stunned. I don't know if it's just the complete ego blinding itself, but the private jet usage. Remember New York last year? Paparazzi death race 2000? Like when they put out that story, how is it possible to go, guess what? We were chased. We were on our heels. They were going to kill us because they wanted to recreate the Diana situation, the Princess Diana situation. You know, he wanted everybody to sympathize. Like what a better way to bolster our public polls than to have everybody think we're on, you know, on death's door. Uh, then all of a sudden you get the mayor of New York. It turns out, I feel bad for them, but yeah, then talk to the police and nothing happened like that. You, you get the paparazzi who's on his bicycle. He's like, dude, I'm on my bicycle. I'm just, it's like, how am I hounding them? And the only thing they ended up doing was, is you had the Montecito merchandisers pull, turned out a Hertz commercial. Remember the, the Hertz gold emblem behind them? And she has that gold dress. And I was like, <laughs> rent a car. <laughs> It was just crazy, but I mean, it it, it hits a point when it comes to Africa, you know, this is a place with his history and knowledge. The one thing he's earned going to Africa many times over his life, spending months on end where he actually has a degree of knowledge and some skill sets, he could make a difference with his name and it would cost him very little. All he has to do is step down from the pedestal and go. I messed up. I got the letter. I told somebody to take care of it. I didn't follow up. You know what that means to Americans? Americans love anything, love nothing more than somebody who says, I screwed up, forgive me, Uh, you know, and and then stick with me. I'm going to fix this. We love that stuff. It's the the underdog. It's never the scandal that gets you. It's the damn cover-up or ignoring of it. Well, the charity model has been used successfully for PR and business by these elites for many, many years. Yeah. If you look at the Clinton Foundation, all the money <laughs> that came in for Haiti, and then mm. behind the scenes, you know, what they were doing with that money, they were private jetting around the world and staying at first class hotel rooms. So Harry's just following that model. But with Clinton, it was even more insidious. If you look at the private jet flights to Epstein's Island, dozens of flights that he denied when this first came out and if you look at the actual flight logs he's traveling without his bodyguards and he's traveling with a bunch of east european female names oh yeah yeah. and we know you know what that was all about so it's uh you think harry carried it on is that what you're saying i didn't mean to interrupt you but you think harry's carrying on that same mantra that kind of like they do it i'm doing it no big deal we're fine Exactly. And there's no consequences. Look what happened to Prince Andrew. 
Prince Andrew had no consequences for his actions. Mm. And, uh, you know, we've looked at the legal paperwork and the allegations of him extensively, and they're too heinous uh, to talk about what's uh, on this channel right now. Look at Clinton. Nothing's happened to him. So when there's absolute no consequences for your actions, you can pump up this charity work to the fullest. You can fly around the world in private jets and maximize it. But there's a trajectory for these things. If you look at all these movies where the evil villainous couple, in the beginning it's glamour and it's glitz and it's fun, but they end up getting going over this story arc where it starts to slip downhill. And we've seen that with Harry and Meghan now. And there's no stopping it. Once that momentum hits, right. the only outcome is they're going to crash at the bottom. And I think that's what the public is waiting for. So that's a good, that's a good insight here. The good question to lead into this. Are we entering the third and final act? You know, usually in the action movie, whether it's a love story, you know, good guy loves woman, goes after woman, gets woman, loses woman, then the third act, he gets him. Heroic, you know, in the hero's journey, hero struggles, doesn't realize he's a hero, fights bad guy, loses, then comes out in the hero. So in the villains, third act, they're supposed to be, you know, wrapped up in a bow tie. I, you think? See, I think if I think that's one of the reasons why the Africa. I know I'm hitting this again because I feel a lot. It needs more attention, but I feel this. What happened in Africa Parks is the Achilles' heel for the Megans, and when I mean the Megans, I mean them both as a couple and as separate individuals. I have this feeling, no fact, my own deductions, uh, to make that clear. I have a feeling that. Megan, because she hasn't said anything about it yet, I thought she would, claiming, you know, love love my guy, he's my soulmate, but my 48% Nigerian heritage, I had to say something about Africa. I feel like she's going to use this when it comes to the divorce or memoir. That's, that was my turning point with Harry. He betrayed uh, Africa. So I'll, long story short, are we in the third Act the beginning of the end for Harry and Meghan. We are because every time the super villain tries to do something to put them back where they were before, things started to go downhill. It backfires, and what has not backfired in the life of Harry and Meghan for the past couple of years? Spotify, Netflix, everything. Yeah, I agree. Baggage claim. What do you think? I agree. I think, um, and I completely agree with you. I, I didn't think of that, that the Africa Parks story is going to play into Megan twisting it and saying that was my, my, you know, ch shift in perspective about Harry. But I, I, I completely agree that she will use that against him. I think the divorce is going to be fireworks. It's going to be, pu you know, public fodder. It's going to be picked over. And it's going to, Megan is going to pull out all the stops to really be the one surviving from, from a PR perspective. Uh, but it's not going to work in her favor. I think that Johnny Depp and Amber Heard situation was very... Tame? Instruct, well, also instructive in the, the public's ability to see through false PR moves. Uh. Uh, and that the truth will out at the end, you know, and not everything was against Johnny Depp in that sense. Oh because yeah. There were, there were texts where he was, you know, saying some pretty heinous things. And yes, he's, you know, it was clear that he was prone to saying those things, but never actually, you know, resorting to any physical action. And I think if he hadn't had certain, certain things in his favor, like recordings, the public really wouldn't have been able to see that. But being a man saying those heinous things in text, the public could have really easily turned against him and sided with the woman. And Amber Heard was really counting on that. And Meghan Markle is going to take a lot of lessons from that divorce to make sure that things are stacked in her favor so that the public rules in her favor. But they won't. I think we are in that age of the false reputation creation because mm. you can project, you know, everything is now projected virtually. It's, you know, even the people who happen to watch my content, all they know, they don't know me as a real person. They just know me through this, through this, through this medium. medium. So I could be completely falsifying everything that I am at my core and presenting this perfect persona online. But the, but still, people have a gut instinct and that faux persona only lasts for so long. And, you know, 
what I, I like to say is that, uh, and I, I'm sure. Well, I think you're people. fantastic. I think everybody knows that you're fantastic. <laughs> I know you're giving it as an example, but you can feel when people are good or bad. I think the problem is, is I want to use that, the representation society. Is that how you put it? Representation? Um, like uh, public, public uh, reputation. Public you reputation. Know? Faux reputation creation. Faux rep it is because, but I, I think that's one thing that, again, narcissists do. They get people to stop trusting their own gut, their own opinions, their own instincts. They break that down in them. Yes. And when you're talking about that, and Sean was talking about, when I asked him about the third act, we can start to see how it is unraveling. You know, Suits just did a Super Bowl commercial that's going to be out today. I mean, they shared pieces of it, but the stars, the Suits cast came together and they were doing a, basically a Judge Judy thing. For beauty, they went in front of Judge Judy and did this whole uh, makeup commercial. But when they were asked, like, where's Megan? You know, most of those people, they don't have her number. She didn't give it to them after she got married. It's like changed everything. It's like, I'm out of here. You peasants are beneath me. Hasta la vista, baby. So it's, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting how... I love that, that Gina Torres said that. Sorry to interrupt. Just a No, 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 you're she right. Said that, she said, we don't have her number. And the way she did it, I felt like it was as if she had, they all have her number and they don't yeah. want her number. Well, they don't. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they don't. It's not, it's not possible. But uh, it, it's just, I think we, are, we have entered the third act. This is the beginning of the end. I think the next big thing that will happen is they might have a few things, whether they end up at the Super Bowl today or not. We'll find out later in the day. Then they'll have the Invictus Games. We'll have the project that she puts together if they finish it for Netflix. We know the animated series Pearl was canceled. That, was, that happened in the first year. Harry and Meghan, their docu-series, was really only popular in the UK at number one everywhere else it was for the first week, and then it died off. Their Live to Lead series, Invictus, even though I think that's a shame, I love the way the, the veterans come together and it recharges their life. If Harry and Meghan weren't involved, I think that would be a super hit. I think their brand is so damaged that they're, they're toxic to everything. But after that, they have a movie. You know, They're turning that book into a movie for Netflix, and I think then they'll be done. But so we'll have the little shots here and there, whatever William Morris can get them to try to appease them, which is they got him a hockey, they got Megan a hockey commercial for a second six weeks ago. Did you see that one? She was on a hockey commercial for a second. Yeah, it was the Canadian Hockey League, and it goes to this big commercial. And all of a sudden, she's there for a quarter of a second, smiling. And I'm like, wow, most powerful talent agency in the world got her a quarter second spot in a hockey commercial. Way to go. <laughs> She's not going to be in the Suits rerun. So what does she have left? Buy another award in their pay for play philanthropy gig, put out a memoir, and get divorced. That or an OnlyFans page. That's about it. I can't think of anything else, which would be scary. I don't want to see it. But uh, I just can't. I don't see. I don't see where else they're going. The I don't world doesn't that. deserve that kind of horror. No, 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 no. It would destroy the company, but yeah, which it doesn't bother me, but there's nowhere left for them to go. Yes. I mean, when the people who work with you don't want to work with you, there was something I was saving. I was like, I hope we'll get to stream again, all of us. But I wanted to ask before we start slowly winding everything down, what do you think Harry's mindset was when she took him to Jamaica for that Bob Marley thing? I looked back. It was almost 13 years, I think it was, to the date within the month that she had had her wedding there with her other husband. So he's there with her when she had done the dirty deed with the other guy in Kingston in the same spot. And I'm like, now remember, the reason I ask is because he shared in spare how much it bothered him. Like he needed electroshock therapy to get out the sex scenes he saw her on cable TV. Then he's staying at the hotel where she was with the producer. How is it? I don't know. I found that a little peculiar. I think he's a very possessive person. Cause just even that comment again, he made to John Travolta about cool. dining out on the story of, of dancing with his mother. And he has this very, he's very possessive of his mother. And I think that probably carries into his relationships as well. And I would imagine he 
felt he I I don't think he's ever really gotten over that and he did look he every time he's out with her he looks like he's ready for the world to end. It's pained. very strange. Yes, very p- pained. Even at, at the Invictus games, he looked so happy when she was not around. He was so himself, he was bubbly, laughing. The second she showed up, he he went back to his very stressed looks. You're right, though. We have seen him. When was the last time we've actually seen him smile? It was in Japan when he went to that polo. Hmm. What was that polo match? Yeah, he went with his friend. Then it was when I he think went Invictus before that. Invictus before that. Oh, yeah. until she showed up and led the march. You remember the march yeah. in front of the veterans? It's like so everybody, crazy. we're here for the veterans. Me, a non-veteran, will lead them down Main Street in uh, shorts that. and slippers. And she's it's just loving it. She's just loving. She's like grinning ear to ear with all the tension that's on her. She's just loving it. It's just, it's like no shame. I have, I haven't met someone in my life who has no shame. I mean, it's like they would have less than other people, but no shame, like zero. I'm like, there you go. Harry and Megan. I think actually he has more shame than she does. I think she doesn't care. As long as it like gets her on a front page headline, she's for it, whatever it takes. But uh, this has been an amazing show. I think we're going to have to do it again. I know that, Sean, you have, you know, the baby is has colic, and um, you're going to be wrapping up soon, and baggage claim you have an out coming in. So uh, let, me just, let, me just, let me just say one thing on to yeah. what you just said, just said there then. So. The things that should be bothering him, like Jamaica, the parallels with exes, etc. When you're in this dream state, when you are hypnotized by the narcissist, all that stuff, it, you, you're not aware of it. But when the bubble does pop and you look back and then you're hitting your head, you're like, how stupid I was. Why didn't I see this? Why didn't I see this? Why didn't I see this? And I think that is yet to come in the third act of this story arc. Okay. For the view- um, yeah, baby Ziggy's colicky, but put a one in the chat if you want me to go and see if he's still awake and he'll come and give you a goodbye wave. Put a two in the chat if you do not want to see baby Ziggy and we will we will abide by your votes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, everybody wants to see babies are wonderful. That's okay. again. <laughs> but, think, but think about that. Even that fact, that fact will go to speak to Megan and Harry. Megan could have, Harry could have had Megan, even if she didn't want to go in the public, bring the kids so King Charles could see them. Yes. I, and- I, I was asking family who had, who we've had family members who had cancer before. The thing they love more than anything, seeing the kids. It just, it revives them. The kids situation is so strange because there are so many events that they could have had the kids. They could have the kids spending time with their cousins, with the queen before she passed. There were so oh. many instances that they have left the kids magically at home. Or even when she didn't show up to the aviation award because she said her child was sick. Was sick. And then the next day she's at the Jamaican Jamaica premiere. What happened to your magically now cured child you know what that's called the healing power of paparazzi (laughs) (laughs) there was a a red carpet and an opportunity to wear a ball 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 gown so she showed up there he is hello bye ziggy Ziggy. beautiful see see those people on the screen waving to you (laughs) they're all waving to you look we got some uh, super chats to probably uh, maybe the guests could help you with George. Okay, if y'all want to answer a couple, let's let's yes. watching. show them up, pull them up. George from Eric A for five dollars. Thank you for having these two amazing guests on Baggage Claims. Such a lady, brilliant and beautiful. And Sean is so insightful. They love you. you. The Thank chat you. loves you. Thank you, Eric A. Poppy cakes for ten dollars. Fantastic, insightful, intelligent for you. Thank you, George. Hopefully, we'll all be back together again. We'll do it again. Thank you, Pop yes, Cakes. Absolutely. Linda H. for $5. I really appreciate your content and all the content providers holding the grifters to task. We are the wall. The line in the sand. Thank you, Can Linda. Can I say something about that? Yes. The, this part is so important because we've entered this cultural <laughs> norm of saying that any sort of criticism is too negative. And people call, you know, they often refer 
to people criticizing as bullies, saying, oh, let them just live their life. Yes, if they were off living their lives privately, I would be happy to leave them alone. And I'm sure George and Sean would say Absolutely. the same thing. 100%. But they're challenging an institution that is the embodiment of an entire nation's culture. And they're challenging them publicly. And they're challenging the American government as well and a lot of our institutions and, and our, our cultural, cultural norms. It's important to criticize their ideas so that we can suss out what's a good idea, what's a bad idea. We can't just have celebrities saying whatever they want and have and kind of exist consequence free because if if that is the case, Africa parks would just go under the radar and we would say, oh, well, Harry has no responsibility in that park. Let him get all the boons of that of that reputation gain from from being part of it, but none of the consequences as being someone who's not a responsible to, uh, steward of that of that position. So it's important that we always have these conversations. And and Linda is obviously very very appreciative of that. And thank you, Linda, for saying that. Oh, absolutely no. You that was well said. Thank you. you you're absolutely right. We we call this out. If Harry and Megan were to do like they said six months ago that they were considering buying a small island. And they went there and didn't involve themselves and try to, you know, turn hypocrisy and grifting into a Olympic event. I would be good luck. God bless. Go live your life. But they do the opposite of what they say. You nailed it. Thank you. Greek life for $20. Go, George. Love the giant slayer always. I always have a problem reading those. It feels like I'm tooting my own horn, but thank you, Greek life. It's weird. Like, go, George. I'm like, yes. No, no. That's weird. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. Panda for two pounds. It's a super sticker. Thank you very much, Panda. Nick R for five pounds. Super sticker. I got to find out what these super stickers are about. I really appreciate it, Nick R. Thank you. Next, we have... Panda for two pounds. It's a super sticker. Okay. We got that one. Thank you, Panda. Pina Bruno Grieve for five pounds. That's correct. Five pounds or five euros? Pounds. Five pounds. pounds. Another super sticker. Thank you very much, Pina. I really appreciate it. All of that helps the channel. Steel Leg of History. He's been a member for a month. So proud of Be Blessed. Just hit 277 sub. You keep going. I love your birthday stream. And I love all the games that you were uh, playing. I always support you. If you don't know who Steel Leg of History is, go check out his channel. He's a good friend of mine. And he's just started uh, making videos on YouTube. He's hit 277 subs. Let's see if we can get him up to 500. That's his next goal. Next, we have Tammy Linkletter. Tammy Linkletter became a YouTube member. All right, you have started your journey. It's going to be an adventure. Thank you, Tammy. <laughs> SA Watch became a YouTube member. Oh, did you want to say something, Sean? No, no, I'm just oh, fixing the light. I thought you were getting Ziggy, oh, Ziggy, oh. Ziggy knocked the mic everywhere. <laughs> he, was watching, he was watching you guys. <laughs> he was oh, watching you. he was very beautiful. I hope he feels better. I hope he feels better. Yeah, Colic is a pain you. for babies. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> SA Watch for $10. Send a super sticker. Thank you, SA Watch. It all helps the channel bring you more videos. Steel Leg of History. We just read that one. Men member for a month. Eileen Mulcahy been a, became a YouTube member. All of these people jumping in, joining the adventure. Thank you, Eileen. Julie Tag for 10 pounds. When the queen had a difficult decision to make, especially when she was conflicted, if it was reeling, re, reeling to family, relating to family, Philip used to prompt her and ask, what would the queen say? Mm. I miss Queen Elizabeth. I do. I, I was raised watching Queen Elizabeth because my grandmother, some of you may know it, she worked for the Greek and the British underground. She hid British soldiers during World War II. Wow. So you could not, I mean, there was, I don't care if it was a stranger, family, friend, an acquaintance. When the Queen was on and someone would say like, well, you're in America, you're America. My grandma, get the hell out of my house. That, that's the Queen. That's the, but she would also do the little bit of a wave. She'd be like, we, we'd call her. I was like, okay. But the way that Harry and Meghan treated her, the last year we've learned how ill she was. Prince mm -hmm. Philip on his deathbed had to endure that. And next time, you know what I want us to address? Was the amount of stress that the Megans caused in any way participatory in getting Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip to leave this earth too soon? Like, you think about it. Prince Philip, Queen Elizabeth, 
Princess Catherine, now King Charles. It's like, is it a contributing factor, all that stress, the constant bombardment and the attacks? Yes. And I, yeah. just to add a little bit to that, just um, I think that they could have absolutely delayed it. But specifically, I think they didn't want to do that because they wanted to film it while Megan was expecting. Mm, good point. Good point. So that any, again, if anyone criticizes her, they say, well, you're criticizing someone who's expecting. Right. Right. This is a you're great, right. great, bar great shield. She's very manipulative. Very. But what I've discovered in this uh, stream is she laid a lot more traps than I thought. I thought most of them were instinctual, but I'm seeing now it was much more strategic. I, th I thought most of the time she was being reactive and taking advantage of the situation, and she would lay a few traps. But now I'm seeing, after what you and Sean were sharing, especially is that she actually planted a lot of straw man arguments, waiting for people to hit these trip wires. Yes. So I'm going to go back and do some research on some old for a new video on that. I am Cordelia. Yo, oh, thank you. I am Cordelia for $5. Megan is going to get half of everything from Harry in the divorce, including half of Diana's lock of hair. He keeps on the night. Wow. <laughs> I hope he keeps it on the nightstand, um, Cordelia. Because that <laughs> hair, I don't know where he put that thing. Oh, and he's going to come back to England, marry Lady Colin Campbell, and they're going to ride <laughs> off into the sunset. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he wishes. <laughs> she is a she is a smart as attack. She has his number. Oh yes. Fantastic, Mr. Fox, for Australian five dollars. I think it's too late for Harry to be redeemed. He made it clear about his thoughts of royalty, and it's sad. Harry looks miserable while Megan grins. You know what I'm going to say to that? If he truly, that, again, is another thing that is a pet peeve of mine. He says he can't stand the royal family, accepts the Ripple of Hope Award from the Kennedys for fighting structural racism in the royal family, but won't give up the damn titles. Hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. And titles for his children as again. well. I mean, yes. it's like if you say, I hate racists, I got an award because I say the royal family's racist, but guess what? I'm not, I'm still a prince. My kids will be, I'm like, wait a minute, you, you can't have it both ways. Yeah. Sally for two pounds. Thank you, Sally. Appreciate it greatly. Joe X for two pounds. Super sticker. I got to find out what these super stickers are. Next time I'll be prepared and I'll know what they are. But thank you, Joe X. Um, they're, uh, they're different things. Joe X was a Bathsheba with hearts. Okay. And, uh, just, you know, thank you. No, that's our great producer, Mexican Iron Man, who I couldn't be able to do this today without and missing is Syndic, our incredible editor, you know, for his intros and his outros. So stay tuned and watch the outro. You're going to love it. The Terry Runnels for $10. It's a super sticker. Oh, Terry, how are you doing? It's been a long time. I used that to is a it. thank you. Super sticker. Just, you know, thank you, Terry. You know, she was in the WWE in wrestling, and she would always send me these comments for every uh, Megan and Harry video. So thank you, That's Terry. So cool. Yeah. Sindak for $5. There's my brother from another mother. Top class guest today, George. Baggage claim. Amazing analysis. Sean Atwood, great insight. Baby Sean, too. I love making fun of the Megans. Comes easy. Well, you do it brilliantly. Thank you, Sindak. Roxanne Newman for $5. What a cutie, Ziggy. Looks like his dad. <laughs> More right. her than me, though. <laughs> Mama T for $10. Awesome and intelligent panel. Thank you for the truth. Heart. Thank you. Awesome thing. I think, did we get them all? I can't believe it. I think we did. Did we get them all, Mexican Iron Man? Good job. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Sean, for being here. Baggage Clan. I, I want everybody, please, go check out their YouTube channels. Go sign up with them. Do you have anything you want to add, Sean, that's coming up this week? So this week we have got uh, Atwood Unleashed is a four-hour live stream on Wednesday, covering a lot of ground, a lot of the royal stuff. And then Friday night we've got a royal mess, which is a two to three-hour show. Quite often Samantha or Tom Mark will drop in. And if people want more Ziggy videos, uh, we've got the Atwood family channel. You can even watch Ziggy being born. Yes. It's oh, wow. Quite a, quite a video. Very intense indeed. Oof. Oh, here's one for you from Blue Sky for $20. Hello, George. Baby Ziggy was the icing on the cakes. Well, Sean did it all. Bring him back on. Bring him back on. <laughs> Heck yeah. 
<laughs> Beautiful. Baggage claim. You have anything coming up this week? You want to tell everybody where they can find you and what you want to share with them? Yes, you can find me on YouTube if you search for baggage claim. I make I used to make a lot of videos about Harry and Meghan, and then I slowly started to peter out, and now I talk about cultural issues in general. So I try to pinpoint where cultural narcissism has really impacted us. And um, one of the latest videos I made um, is it talks about how feminism has not really helped society. So if you're interested in content like that, analyzing sort of co cultural trends on a bigger scale, check that out. And then I do have a new video coming out. I'm not sure when. I've recently hired an editor, so I'm very hey. happy about that. <laughs> yeah, it's good to transition that off. Uh, of my plate. So uh, well, look out for, for I've done, for, I'm going to do, it's kind of out of sequence, but I'm, I'm doing um, analysis of the monologue that was done in Barbie about how hard oh. it is to be a woman. Yeah. I can't so, wait to hear that one. Yeah. I know I'm publishing it six months late. The movie's been out for so long, but sometimes my brain just doesn't make connections until some time later. So whenever I kind of feel inspired is when I end up publishing them. I do the I've same just, thing. I've just subscribed to your channel, Baggage Claim. Links in the description, viewers. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're both Thanks, brilliant. <laughs> I, I can't wait to see what you're going to do with the editor. That, that's uh, that's going to be great. I hope we can have you all back. I think it was brilliant. Now that I've gotten to meet you, it's just, we're going to be doing pop culture uh, probably next weekend, and then we'll hold another Megan stream coming up soon. I'm still shocked. We had a full house. Look at everybody was looking forward to it. I hope you had it. Oh. Here we go. Fantastic. Five more, five more super chats came in real quick. Five more super chats. Okay. Fantastic. Mr. Knox for another Australian $2. Who's the worst couple? The Megans or the Smiths? Ew. The only reason I would say the Megans is because of their relentless attacks against their family. For all the nuts and all the craziness that the Smiths do, they jointly agreed to it. Like the whole open relationship. Will Smith was a man. He had a pair. He said, fine. He didn't. And that, but they agreed to it. Adults raised wacko kids but the megans attacked groups of people citizens of the united kingdom attacked a family openly you keep that stuff quiet you don't like it you don't air it so no i say it's the megans i agree no. i agree i was about to say the smiths but you convinced me because <laughs> at least the smiths really are just doing damage to each other yeah, yeah. yes but and not involving everybody else to it yes Except for that slap, which was weird as hell. I, I At first, I thought it was staged, but then I kept watching. I'm like, no way. He didn't see that. Chris didn't see that coming. Yeah. But, yeah. I, I would I mean, say the Megans, just, they're unrelenting. I've never seen a couple try to transform hate into cash. That's a new one. It's like mm -hmm. Amazon did with Rings of uh, Power, trying to transform disrespect into dollars. I was like, they're, they're doing the same thing. Wacko. Syndic again for $2. Watch our past Megan videos. They're filled with gems. We have Syndic puts Easter eggs in them all. You got to watch them slowly and, and spot them. See what you, and share that in the comments. Syndic, your editing is great, by the way. It was really well done. Oh, he, he knows it. He's, he's, he's a genius when it comes to that. We've always said <laughs> our, our team, the way we work together, he's like the visual genius. I do the mm -hmm. writing. And, and it really works well. We have uh, we have a great time. Graph Web for two dollars. Cancel Disney Plus. Amen. Here, here. Cancel Disney Plus. They just lost another million and a half subscribers, by the way. Alissimo Iris for five dollars. It's a super sticker. Thank you, Alissimo. Uh, fruit with hearty eyes, uh, expressing love for you, George. Thank you. I wish you to have a wonderful week. The lovely Siri. Hello, my friend. How are you doing? I saw your comment this morning. It's for $5 from the lovely Sherry. I hope you have a brilliant day and a beautiful week, Sherry. The sticker says that you're number one. Oh, thank you, Sherry. That means a lot. Sally ends two for one pound. It's a super sticker. It's a piece of pie. A piece of pie. Oh, that makes sense. Thank you for that. This has been fun. I, I, I've had a great time. I just Wonderful panel. Incredible chat. So I hope all of you have signed up for your memberships and we will see you next Sunday for another live stream. It'll be number seven and then in the membership live stream coming February 21st on a Wednesday. Other than that, remember that we never bow down. We never bend the knee. Always forward.
<laughs> that was uh oh we're still, we're we've still taken live. over <laughs> finally George, we own your channel george what have you done <laughs> george sean and i are gonna hold it captive <laughs> what is going on it got boomered somehow the outro which was a perfect exiting didn't happen encore, encore, oh, no. encore. <laughs> well, here we're back. yes it got boomer but you know what that's why youtube is so fantastic you can't do that on network television <laughs> Because if, here you go one more time. Always forward. Never forget that.